The train station arrives in a walk-in. Buy a small water, drink it and climb on board the train. A guard man stops me. Hey pal, you do know you have to check in in the sleeper trains, eh? I did not know, I ask him. Really? He replies, aye, what high security, the whole country's on red alert. If you go in without checking in, we'll simply have to destroy your baggage, eh? Wow, that's quite a punishment, I think. I decide to check in. How do I check in, I ask. That's with me, eh? What carriage you in? M14, I say. That's fine, on you go. I get to M14, it turns out I'd read my ticket incorrectly. I'm an M4. Ah, well, I go to M4 and enter. Jings. It's freaking tiny, and this is first class. The standing area is about one foot by four foot, seriously, with one tiny set of bunk beds beside. Standard class must be a chicken coop. There's a bag on the bed below, so I put my stuff upstairs and head to the bar. I walk too far. A scary man asks me where I'm going. To the bar, I say. It's right here, he replies, and points down at a small round table, perched full of various cans of foul-looking warm English lager. They have no water on sale, which is annoying. He looks like a butcher. He's wearing a filthy apron, tattooed arms on hips, and drilling me with a stare. I think, at night, on the sleeper, the trains are less concerned about image. Grab a menu, he threatens, recklessly motioning towards a table. I grab a menu. All the food looks terrible. Plus, if this ape is cooking it, I'd rather wait eight hours and buy a pasty at Euston, or a Boots meal deal. There's an extremely posh man sitting nearby, bellowing into his phone. But I was right, and I knew I was right, and I'm very good at telling people I'm right, so therefore I didn't mind too much that they were wrong. He's dressed up as Rupert the Bear, and has a drink as Jingle Bell's nose. There's a space beside him, and I briefly consider getting a whiskey and sitting there, but decide against it, just in case it is he that I'm sharing a room with. A group of lads arrive and are scared away by the trained chef butcher ninja man. Before they leave, they buy a can of carling each. Poor sods. I go back to my bunk and climb up. Hmm. It would appear I'm too lang for these bunks. It would appear I'm in the wee man's compartment. I'm forced to lie with my knees up in there as if I'm due to give birth, which I'm not. To be fair, though, although the bed is small, the room is cramped and I'm sharing with a stranger, at least it doesn't smell, is a reasonable temperature and is dry. I pull back the covers to wriggle under and greeted by a flattened red beetle. That's nice, I think. I look for more, but find none. A lonely death for the beetle a long way from home. Covers on, lights off, sleep beckons. The door opens. I hear a recognisable grunt. It's Rupert. Good evening, he says. Good evening, I reply, then feign sleep. 6am, a steward knocks on the door. We've arrived. Rupert gets up and leaves. I feel terrible. I'm moderately hung over and exhausted. My mouth is dry, my head is aching. I need water, sleep, food, painkillers. I have painkillers. And what's this? Ah, the train folk have donated a tiny bottle of water. I recover my paracetamol codeine combination pills and wash them down with a cup of warm plasticky water. I shall feel better in mere minutes, no doubt. I climb down and begin to pack up, all of the while aware of a white bag left at the end of Rupert's bed. I wonder what's in it. Hmm. I go for an orange juice and return. No sign of Rupert, but the bag is still there. I should have had a look inside. After all, the country is on high alert. I would be a good citizen, making sure there's no bomb in there. I poke it. It is substantial, as in spongy, but thick, like a soaking wet towel. I feel the outside. It has hard bits, like a coat hanger is wrapped inside the towel. I unwrap it. Ah, it's in layers. I unwrap the second layer. Ah, it's a goose. A goose, unplucked. A goose. Hmm. The goose looks up at me with one dead eye. Hello, James. I am a dead goose, bound for a posh man's pot. Hmm. Wrap it back up and leave. Somewhere, Rupert is in a taxi, exclaiming, Good Lord, where's the blasted goose?